The next thing we have to find is the, is the month with the lowest, lowest rainfall amount. It's basically going to be the same as this function here. I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm just going to change a few things. What we are finding, close this a little bit. Um, yeah. So what we are finding is not the highest rainfall amount. We are finding the lowest rainfall amount here. Lowest rainfall amount. Um, sorry. We are not finding the lowest rainfall amount. If I was saying amount, I'm sorry. I meant to say we are finding the, over here we are finding the highest rainfall month. We did it correctly. Over here we are finding the lowest rainfall month, and not the amount, month. So we will need a total rainfall list. We'll need the names of month list. We are finding the lowest rainfall amount here. Let me just make sure this is recording. So 22 minutes, 45 seconds. Let's see, 22 minutes. Okay, so it's recording. 22 minutes, 40. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes it acts funny. All right, so we are finding the lowest rainfall amount, which is going to be, we are finding the minimum amount in this, in this list, the minimum rainfall amount in this list. Now, the lowest rainfall amount index is going to be equal to the index of the lowest rainfall amount. And we're returning the name of the month in this names of the month list with the lowest rainfall amount index. And we're done with this function as well. Basically, we're done with everything the question is asking us to find. The next thing I want us to do is to create a function that's going to print out the, all the details for us. So I'm going to call a, sorry, let's actually, do, let's define a function. I'm going to call this function print, oops, my typing is bad, print rainfall you know, statistics. And we want it to just print out a bunch of stuff for us. So I'm going to create, define parameters for, for a bunch of, you know, values. First thing I want to pass to this function, uh, function because we will need it, is going to be the, all the rainfall amounts, okay, the total rainfall amount list. So I'm going to define a parameter for that. So total rainfall list. Because because in, I want to also I want to print out a lot of details. I want to print out and say something like this: January has a rainfall amount of this. February has a rainfall amount of this, and then we print out the average rainfall, total rainfall, month with the highest rainfall and the month with the lowest rainfall. So I'm going to pass in the rainfall amounts list. I'm also going to pass in the names of months list. Over here, all I'm doing is just defining parameters for them. Right? These names can be anything. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter, they are the same here. Like I said, the scope of these variables are within their individ individual functions. So I'm passing in the total rainfall list, the names of month list, because we need those names you know, in our output. And the, the question said we should find the total, so I'm going to pass in also, create a, create a parameter for the total rainfall. And I'm also going to create a parameter for, before that, I know I'm going to exceed, exceed this line here, and so I'm going to break it. Before I break it, I type in a backslash, hit enter. All right, so the next parameter I want to define is going to be our average rainfall. We need that to display as well. And then we want to also display the highest rainfall month. And we also, we also want to display the lowest rainfall month. I'm exceeding this line, so I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Before I break it, I type in a backslash, hit enter. Okay, so now in our function, oops, right here in our function, we want to display the values, right? The before we, okay, let's, let's just do it. I wanted to do something else. All right, so let's print out, first of all, that, okay, January has rainfall amount of this. February has rainfall amount of this. March has rainfall amount of this and so on and so forth. We have the we will have the names. Whoever calls this function has to pass in a list containing the names of the month, right? So, assuming the person has passed this, or assuming that whatever part of the code you know, basically whoever calls this function has to pass in the names of the list. Assuming the, assuming that that is given, we can access the names of the months in there in our in our output. So I'm going to create a loop to basically go through the names of the months. Because that's what we are doing. We want to say generally has a rainfall amount of this. But the beautiful thing is that, um, so, let, so let me just let me just go ahead and create a list, the, so the loop first, just so you have an idea of how it's going to be. So I'm going to create a loop that's going to go through the names of the month list first. So for, for 
I'm going to create a target variable which is going to basically hold the indices or the indexes. I'm going to call this for current month index. Doesn't matter that this variable is the same as this one. Again, these variables, the scope of them, are within their individual um, functions. Okay, so for current month index in oops, for current month index in range, I'm going to create a range of the length of the names of the month. So length of names of the month list. If the names of the month list contain 12 names, then this is going to create a range from 0 to 11. First time that I trade, 0 is going to be assigned to current month index. Second time that I trade, is going to assign 1 to current month index all the way to 11. Okay. So the beautiful thing is that we can use the, um, the indexes or the indices stored in current month index to access elements in both the total rainfall list and then the names of the month of month list. So total rainfall list will contain 12 rainfall amounts with indexes or indices 0 to 11. Names of months will contain 12 names of the months, January to December, with indexes 0 to 11. So we can use... So basically, they'll match, they'll have matching values. The first rainfall amount stored here will be the rainfall amount for January. The second rainfall amount stored here will be the rainfall amount for February. And so if we have the month index, you know, the, you know, if we have the month index, we can use that month index to access the matching elements, the, the rainfall amount, and it's, um, and, and the month, and, and the month with that rainfall amount in the names of the month list. So that's the beautiful thing we can do with the current month index. So over here, what I want to print out is I want to print out that, okay, this current month has a rainfall amount of this. Then we I trade again. The next month has a rainfall amount of this. So I want to print out a message saying the current month, and the way we access the current month is by referring to the name of the list and using the current month index to access the current month. So this month here, and then I'm going to continue with the string. So this month has a rainfall amount of, all right? I'm going to pass in another argument. And the way we access that rainfall amount is by referring to the total rainfall list and using the current month index to get the current rainfall amount for this particular month over here, okay? So we're done with this. I want to just break this line into two somewhere around here. Before I break it, I need to type in the backslash and hit enter. So this current month is going to have a rainfall amount of this. And then we move on. We display the next one too. All right. So, so yeah, that's going to take care of at least the rainfall values. It's going to say this month has a rainfall amount of this. Next month has a rainfall amount of this and so on and so forth. We have, we have some other values we want to display. So after all of that, outside the loop, Let's also print out the total rainfall, the average rainfall, the month of the highest rainfall, and the month of the lowest rainfall. So I'm going to create a print function, and I'm going to start with a string and say total rainfall um, with a colon, and I'm going to concatenate it still. So this is one argument. I'm going to concatenate it with the rainfall amount, which is going to be the value here. Uh, sorry, total rainfall, which is the total rainfall amount here. I'm going to concatenate it with that value. All right, so but when I try to concatenate a string and a, t a floating point value over here will be a float. When I try to do that directly, I'll get an error. I need to make sure this is a string, and the way I do that is by um, surrounding it with a string function. And so I'll well, we have a string here, concatenating a string to another string, no problems. All right, so this whole thing here, this whole uh, value is going to be one argument. So I'm going to pass in, uh, type in a comma and type in a second argument. I want to break the line here. I'm going to break it here, type in a backslash, hit enter. The next argument is going to be our, oops, average rainfall with a colon. I'm going to concatenate it with a string version of our average rainfall here. And then I'm going to type a comma, to pass in the next argument. I'm going to break this line, though. Hit enter. 
the next argument is going to be our highest rainfall or we're going to say let's say something different let's say january has the highest rainfall february has the highest rainfall and the way we access the month is by using the highest rainfall month so we're going to say highest rainfall month and then let's concatenate it with the string so highest rainfall month this particular highest rainfall month has the highest rainfall and that's going to be one string and then the next argument is going to be the lowest rainfall month concatenate it with a string oops has the lowest rainfall and then we're done All right so by default when you pass in arguments to the print function this way they are displayed with a space separating them so this whole value here is one argument you can see there's a comma here this whole value here is another argument you can see there's a comma here so these individual arguments will be displayed with a space separating them i don't want a space separating them i want them to be displayed on a new line i want this argument to be to, to be displayed on a new line and so we can change the default space separator we can change the default separator of a space to a new line character so i'm going to pass in the argument scp which stands for separator I'm changing it from a space to, in double quotations, a new line character. And I'm going to type in a new line character here, backslash n. You're changing it from a space to this, backslash n. The backslash n is what's called a new line character. It's like a new line character escape sequence. Both the backslash and n, with the backslash and the n together is the new line character. So I'm changing the separator, the default separator, to a new line character. All, all I'm saying is, when you print this, separate it with a new line. What a new line is, is so what it will do is it will display this value, for example, and then it will create a new line. It will move the position from the end of this line to the next line. And anything that follows this okay, will be displayed from the next line going. And then it will display this on the next line, and then it will separate it with a new line. What it, what it does is it will move the position from the end of that line to the next line, and anything that follows this will be displayed from the next line going. So it just separates them with a new line moves you know display all of them on a new line that's what this is going to do and then we're done right so let's see is if that's the outcome we want we haven't really run our program to see if we have any errors the next thing i'm going to do is i'm basically going to create uh, another function so now i have functions if, I, if you run this program nothing is going to happen because we've only defined functions i'm going to try to i'm going to save it and let's run it and see so save selected files I'm going to go to our folder where we have where we save all our program so on the desktop I have Python programming challenges chapter 7 I'm going to create a new folder for this called rainfall you know statistics so that's a folder for that I'm going to save this as rainfall you know stats.py so rainfall you know the pi okay Save it, let's see if we have any errors, so not yet. So when you run this program, nothing happens. Why? Because we, we only have functions. We're not doing anything. We haven't called any of them. I'm going to create another function, which is going to be our main function. The main function is basically where your program is, where your program starts. It's the starting point of your program. In most programming languages, the, most, the, the main function is the starting point of your program. That's where your program is. It's the function that calls every other function. So it's a good habit or a good, good practice to do that. All right, so in our now let's start our program. We, we have our functions we can call them. The first thing I want to do is call the get rainfall amount function. And so I'm going to call this function here, get rainfall amount. We know the rainfall amount will need the names of the months list. We don't have it, so we need to create it. So before I even continue with this function here, I'm going to come up here and declare a list with the names of the months. So I'm going to call this names of months. All right, names of months, I guess. So it's going to be called to a list. I'm going to initialize it with basically the names of the month. So bear with me here. I'm going to type in January all the way to February. So January, February. So just bear with me here.
Yeah, so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. So now I have the list containing all the names of the month. I want to break it somewhere around here. So type in a backslash and hit enter. I'm going to continue breaking this line here. Type in a backslash, hit enter. Okay. So this function, get rainfall amounts, needs the names of the month list, which we now have here. So I'm going to pass in this list to this function. And we know this function, get rainfall amounts, returns the total rainfall list. And so if it's returning a list containing a total rainfall after the user has typed in all the values, then I'm going to create another list here that's going to receive that list that's returned from the get rainfall amounts function. I'm still going to call it rainfall amounts. Or the rainfall amount list. I'm still going to call it rainfall amount. Let's let's call, let's call it total rainfall list. I'm still going to call it total rainfall list again. It doesn't matter that the name is the same as this. The scope of this variable is within this get rainfall amount function, and that's it. And the scope of this variable is here. It's going to be a list. The scope of this list, actually, this is also a list. The scope of this list is going to be within the main function, so it doesn't matter. They don't see each other at all. So I'm going to create a total rainfall list here. I'm going to set it equal to an empty string. And I'm going to store the list that's returned from the get rainfall amount function. This list that's returned. I'm going to store it here in this list. And so total rainfall list in the main function is going to receive whatever list is returned from the get rainfall amount function. I'm going to separate them a little bit so it's it's, it's not too con it's not confusing. So I have the total rainfall list now. The next thing I want is my total rainfall, the total rainfall. We have a function for that. We have calculate total rainfall. I'm going to make a copy of it. And so I'm going to call that function. And we know that function receives a few things. Uh, there's basically one thing. It receives the total rainfall list, which we have here. So I'm going to make a copy of it and pass it into this function. And we know the calculate total rainfall returns the total rainfall. And so if it's if re returning a total rainfall, then I need a place to store it. So right above, so right below this total rainfall list, I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to call it total rainfall. Um, actually, we don't have to declare a variable. I'm just going to, we don't have to declare it before we use it down there. We can just declare it here. I'm going to call it total rainfall. And I'm going to receive, so total rainfall, this variable here is going to receive whatever total rainfall, this calculate total rainfall function is going to return. 